There are only six games left to play in season one of the Everton Takeover rebuild, which means new manager Graham Potter is finalising his shortlist of targets for the summer transfer window, and he'll potentially get a chance to look at a handful of those targets in today's featured game versus Chelsea at Stamford Bridge. Potter is obviously very familiar with Moises Caicedo from their time at Brighton, and the same can be said for Mark Kukurea. But with James Tarkovsky only getting older, it's players like Benoit Badia Shiel who have caught Graham Potter's eye. Trevor Chalobah too would be a great fit at centre-back, but he's currently out on loan. Whilst a player like Conor Gallagher could provide a little bit more creativity alongside Amadou Onana in midfield. Mikhailo Mudrik has never really settled in at Chelsea and he would be an excellent addition alongside Reese Nelson. And Chelsea have a lot of exciting young players with bright futures ahead of them, like Kani Chukwumeka, like Noni Madweke, and like the 18-year-old Brazilian David Washington. And a number of those players do feature today. No Conor Gallagher in the lineup, but Badishil starts at centre-back, and Madweke is the other player in the starting 11 at right midfield, whilst David Washington finds a place on the bench. As for Graham Potter's 11, it's pretty much as you would expect the strongest back five, Onana and Ghana in midfield. The only surprise addition to the starting 11, potentially Lewis Dobbin, starting in place of Dwight McNeil in support of Reese Nelson and Beto up front. We do have two other games to get to in today's episode, each at Goodison Park where we will host Nottingham Forest and Brentford. But before that, let's head over to Stamford Bridge where we're not only going to get a good look at our own players, but at those potential transfer targets as well. So we are up in the commentary booth for this one at Stamford Bridge. Rapidly approaching the end of the season here in Season 1. It's been a relatively camp uh, successful campaign, all things told. Didn't really do anything in either of the cup competitions, but the Premier League, of course, was our, our focus. And that's poor defending there initially... And we give the ball away to Madawake, I believe, on the left-hand side. One of the plays that we're getting a look at today as we visit Chelsea. And it's a bit of a disjointed start here, but that's an excellent interception by James Tarkovsky. And it's been a lively start from Chelsea early. As Maxim de Kuyper comes away with the ball on the left-hand side. Big switch of play, but he's got that all wrong. Nathan Patterson in space, but Sterling just cuts it out. So there's a number of players in the Chelsea team that we are having a look at today. Noni Madweke, one that I am fairly interested in. However, the likelihood of being able to secure him, I think, is low. He's very young. He's decently high potential. I think he's 79 overall. Beto, good run through the middle. Can Kuiper get this one right? He can. Beto strikes and it cracks against the post. I thought Beto had opened the scoring within 10 minutes. Maxim de Kuiper got the pass across the field to Nathan Patterson all wrong. But he got that one just right, dropping it right into the stride of Beto, who took it on first time. And the goalkeeper was beaten, but unfortunately cracked against the post. Well, one by Beto, Onana. Patterson just recycles. Amadojic across to Branthwaite. I'm disappointed that we don't see Conor Gallagher in the Chelsea side here today. In fact, I'm somewhat disappointed because we're not going to get a chance to evaluate his performance in person. However, it does mean he's not really a fixture in the Chelsea side at the moment. So that could make obtaining Conor Gallagher in the summer a little easier. Maxim de Kuyper finds Lewis Dobbin this time. Plenty of time to cross. Tries to find Beto but can't. And Chelsea come away with it. On this left-hand side... No Mark Kukurea today either. Not a transfer target of ours, but a, a familiar player to Graham Potter. I'm hoping that we do see David Washington off the bench because he is somebody that I am very much interested in. I think we could arrange some sort of a loan-to-buy deal with Chelsea. Has the referee given a penalty for that? I think the referee has given a penalty against Maxim de Kuyper there. That 
I don't know what to make of that. Based on the last couple of episodes, what we've seen in terms of refereeing decisions before Raheem Sterling takes this penalty, I need to see that again. Of all the decisions we've seen over the last few episodes, this has to be by far the worst. Calabria, I believe playing at right back for Chelsea today, makes his way into the Everton box. Maxim de Kuyper, shoulder to shoulder, sees it out of play and that's a penalty. This is a penalty. I, I, I don't know what to make of the referees at the moment. Pickford goes the right way but can't get to the penalty. It's a good one by Raheem Sterling. And I'm so sick of these celebrations running over to celebrate with the manager every time. It's a penalty, Raheem, against a, a bottom half club. You don't need to go and celebrate with your manager. These referees are just getting worse and worse. Is it just me or are these referees just getting worse and worse? Because I simply cannot get my head around that decision. And again, big club bias has completely ruined this game. We said it against Liverpool in the Merseyside derby. We played very well in that game. And we ran Liverpool close. We really gave them a run for their money. And decisions just completely went against us in that game. Liverpool had two players who should have been sent off. Given straight reds. One was a booking. One was not even that. And then their second goal as well. There was a foul in the build-up that wasn't given. And Liverpool ended up running out 2-0 winners. Looks like the same is going to happen again here today. It's only 1-0 at the moment. And we are enjoying decent spells of possession at the beginning of the game here. Switch your play from Onana over to Nathan Patterson. So we're certainly not giving up just yet. Good cross into the box from Patterson. Headed clear by Chelsea. But again, we're under the cosh. Again, we're behind the eight ball. Again, we are playing against 12 men, it seems. It was Dobbin. Nice little run. Onana can't find him. It was a tough pass trying to thread it through the Chelsea defenders. So beyond these Chelsea transfer targets that we have on our list, the youngsters as well, like Chuku Maker. I'm going to need your help in the comments. Suggestions. People have been making suggestions throughout the series of transfer targets, and I have been scouting them. I have been putting them on my transfer shortlist if they fit the bill of what we're looking for. Good block. Raheem Sterling somehow gets a second shot away. However, I need some specific suggestions in the comments below for this summer. Well worked by Chelsea. Raheem Sterling again. Forced. Towards the touchline by Nathan Patterson. And it's a good challenge by Emma Dodgic. And we can come away on this left-hand side. The Chelsea left. Nice feet from Reese Nelson. Sets Nathan Patterson away. And Lewis Dobbins made a great run. The ball at his feet. Can he finish? Yes, he can. Lewis Dobbins levels the scoring. An excellent quick counter. As Reese Nelson sets Nathan Patterson away. Spotted the run of Lewis Dobbins, who has been... Excellent over the last couple of months here. Has really got a chance since Jack Harrison has gone down to injury to make his mark on the side. And he's certainly been doing that in the last few games and he's done so again here today. Really composed finish past the Chelsea goalkeeper who didn't exactly cover himself in glory there. And despite the referee's best efforts, we do draw level in the game. It's going to be one all here. So as I was saying, we've got some specific areas of the squad that I think need focus. It seems to me that centre-back is going to be an important position to 
upgrade in the summer. Maybe not even upgrade, but at the very least deepen in the summer. We are going to have James Tarkovsky, but he's obviously on the older side now. The wrong side of 30 could challenge James Garner. Reese Nelson again coming away with the ball. Waiting for support in the form of Nathan Patterson. And James Garner, who won the ball back initially. We do also have Arno Armadogic at centre-back. Jared Branthwaite, of course. Ben Godfrey is a decent enough role player. And, of course, if we want to, we can make the loan deal of Nurembamba permanent. However, I do think we're going to need a third starter. To pair alongside Branthwaite and Armadogic with Tarkovsky and Godfrey, our primary backups. Nathan Patterson just lifts it into the box. Not too much on beyond that. Beto putting the pressure on high. So is Lewis Dobbin. Calabria. Won the penalty for Chelsea, but he finds himself in a bit of bother. Deep in his own third. And Chelsea have worked that out well to get the ball away on the, the left-hand side. Good pressure from James Garner again, though. And again, as he almost wins the ball back for a third time. Nathan Patson manages to do that, but relinquishes possession before he can find Amadou Onana with the pass. Onana comes over to stop the cross. He does just that, but it's a fortunate bounce for Chelsea. And it's another excellent challenge from James Garner. And again, he relinquishes possession. Not good enough with the ball at his feet there, James Garner. And that's a good, disciplined approach defensively. And Lewis Dobbin again can come away with the ball here. Beto through the middle this time. Can Dobbin find him? Yes, he can. Beto into the Chelsea box with the chance to make it 2-1. And what a challenge by Dezassi at the last moment. Did really well to recover there. Beto beat his man initially. But it was a good recovery by Dezassi. So the second position that I think we're going to need to strengthen and that I would like your suggestions for is centre midfield. And I think we're going to need two centre midfielders. I think one isn't going to be enough this summer because firstly we're going to lose Idrissa Gay. Collected by Jordan Pickford. We're going to lose Idrissa Gay who is retiring after this season. But I think we just lack a real creative option in the middle as well. A real playmaker. We have Amadou Onana, who's obviously fantastic. We have James Garner too. In a very similar role, though. More of a defensive mind, James Garner. A box-to-box -box type, maybe at most. But hardly a, you know, a true playmaker. Even Abdoulaye Decore, who you would say is probably the most attacking of our central midfielders... Again, he's more of a box-to-box, -box, drive with the ball at his feet kind of attacker. He's not somebody who can pick passes, or at least who's not known for picking passes, for linking play, for slotting little through balls in behind and those kinds of things. That's the type of central midfielder I think we're going to need. So I'd like suggestions, firstly, for a, another defensive midfielder. Just to add to the ranks. Just to add a bit more depth in that position. As Raheem Sterling and eventually Madueke work the ball into a good position once more. There's Romeo Lavia. Good challenge again by James Garner. We're going to have to hook clear through James Tarkovsky, which we do. Half-time whistle. One all. Not a bad result at half-time, especially considering the gift that the referee gave them. Lewis Dobbin doing well to get on the score sheet yet again. He's had a, a fantastic few, few games. And apparently his goal has gone down as a penalty as well. The uh, information at halftime continues to confuse me. But regardless, we... Again, it's a, a first half without too much going on, to be honest. Lots of possession being shared by the teams but few chances created so 
I wouldn't hate it if it continued in the same way in the second half. So back out for the second half at Stamford Bridge. And we'll pick up where we left off in terms of transfer targets. Centre-back is one. Defensive midfield is a second. But creative... A creative player in the centre of midfield would be a third. Oh, as Beto wins the ball in a dangerous area. Finds Lewis Dobbin in space with a chance to cross, which he does. Reese Nelson, the target, though, is not the best one. And then beyond those two central midfield options, I think we're going to need another winger. Dwight McNeil doesn't really fit the system that we're trying to play. There's not really a place for him in the side. His most suitable position, I would say, is left wing back. But we have Maxim de Kuyper there, who's better suited... And Dwight McNeil, he's just, he's too defensive minded to play in one of those forward roles. Good challenge in the end, Armadojic. So I think we're going to need another winger to play alongside Reese Nelson. We do, of course, have Jack Harrison, but I would like him to be our primary option off the bench. And I'd like to bring in another starter in those forward positions in support of whichever striker we end up going with instead I say whichever striker we end up going with because I'm still undecided on Beto he's certainly made his case that he should be our number nine going forward but with only 10 goals to his name at the moment it's not exactly a an irrefutable case so I think a decision there still needs to be made but regardless I would still fall past James Garner not enough on that to reach Maxim de Kuyper I would still like an additional winger to support either Beto or whoever ends up playing up front instead. So four positions I'd like your suggestions for in the comments. We need one centre-back, we need one defensive centre midfielder and we need one attacking, playmaking centre midfielder. What a ball from Patterson. Finds Dobbin. Can he finish? He cracks against the post for a second time. Beto in the first half. Dobbin in the second. Beto hit the post about five minutes into the game. It's a little longer into the second half here, but... Lewis Dobbin again. Really testing the Chelsea goalkeeper. Beating the Chelsea goalkeeper, but... Unable to beat the woodwork. Here's Lewis Dobbin yet again, though. He's been everywhere in this first half and into the second. Eventually dispossessed by Chelsea. But he looks so dangerous, Lewis Dobbin. You would not guess he's just a 65 overall. Lewis Dobbin, of course, somebody that we are going to be looking to play in one of those forward roles next season. But I, I don't think if we have our sights set on progressing and developing as a club I don't think we can rely on him as early as next season as a primary first team player he'll certainly get his minutes he'll certainly be on the bench often he'll certainly be starting the odd game as he is here today the other option would potentially be to send him out on loan for one season to see if he can develop and be a primary option going forward I would rather keep him at the club, though, and, and play him in rotation. Good save, Jordan Pickford. We just couldn't nick the ball away from Chelsea there, playing it around the edge of our box. And so Fernandes to come on for Chelsea. Starting 11 might be slightly different from the one I showed before the game. Because I did back out just to make an, uh, an adjustment in our own tactics and I believe when you go back into the match report it's not always necessarily the exact same 11 so it may be slightly different I don't remember if Enzo Fernandez was starting or if it was Lavia but regardless it's a similar 11 and it's Nicholas Jackson is it Jackson or is it Madueke and again they go and celebrate with the manager what is this Every single goal the CPU seem to score, they want to celebrate with the manager now. 
but it is Nani Madweke, one of the players we've got our eye on. And this is the reason I think it's probably a little unrealistic for us to sign him. Or why it would be extremely difficult, probably almost impossible for us to sign him. He's 22 years old, 79 overall. I imagine a very high potential. Starting for Chelsea and playing well in those starts. It was Dobbin forces a goal kick. It's going to be a change or two for Graham Potter beforehand, though. So a double change for Graham Potter as we enter the last half an hour of the game. Justin Deal and Noah and Bamba to come on. Reese Nelson and James Garner to leave the field. Justin Deal, a player that I still very much want to get a good look at before the season is over. I'm fairly certain we're going to be picking up Noah and Bamba's buy option come the end of the season because he has been impressive and centre-back is certainly a position where we need not only some depth but some high upside young talent nice run again from Lewis Dobbin a good cross in search of deal but the goalkeeper equal to it I'm less convinced by Justin Deal though for two reasons number one his performances just haven't been great he's shown flashes of potential as Nani Madweke leaves the field having got the goal to put Chelsea ahead he showed flashes for sure, but the final product just hasn't really been there for Deal so far. The second reason is that, again, I'm not sure what to do up front. Great ball in. There's Beto. What a goal. And Beto levels the scoring. 11th goal of the season for Beto. And he wants to hear what the Chelsea fans have got to say. Really good ball in from Nathan Patterson. Acres of space and so much time to cross. And what a finish that is. I mean, it's actually not a great finish. It's good technique for Beto. The ball dropping over his right shoulder and onto his left foot. He's done really well just to get that on target. But really, that was straight down the middle. If the goalkeeper just stood there, it probably would have just hit him. But I guess the power on the shot, a little too much for the goalkeeper to handle. And Beto, for the second time today, levels the scoring for Everton. And again, the... I mean, the referee didn't really have a hand in the second goal, to be fair to him, but... Gave Chelsea the head start. We really should be 2-1 up by now. Good challenge, Armand Dodgic. Just hooked clear by Mbamba, and I like the decision. So, yeah, Justin Deal. It's not a guarantee that we'll be picking up his buy option in the summer. Really good feet by the Chelsea attacker there I'm not even sure who that was but whoever it was showed really good feet to find a bit of space inside the Everton box and Lewis Dobbin power as well as pace as he comes away on the left hand side forces an Everton throw if we were to be guaranteed to be moving more towards that false nine centre forward type player up front I would be more tempted to keep Justin Deal. However, if we keep Beto and we go with that more traditional striker, Justin Deal has less of a role. So, undecided what to do up front. Not only about Beto, but about Justin Deal as well. Maxim de Kuyper. Space to cross. Can we find Beto again? Almost found Justin Deal at the back post. The goalkeeper allowing the ball to fly over his head. Rather than claiming it where it looked like he might have been able to there. Well, one, Noah and Bamba. If we do decline, or not decline, but if we uh, if we don't pick up that buy option on Justin Deal, that does, of course, open up another potential transfer that we can make. Noah and Bamba and Justin Deal because they are on those buy options. We've counted them as a loan for this season. But if we pick up the buy options, they would also count as a permanent transfer for next season. So they would eat into 
our five permanent transfers. Lewis Dobbin yet again with a good run, good cross, Justin Deal. This is exactly what we talked about. He showed flashes of potential, but the final product hasn't been there. We should be 3 2 up. It's Lewis Dobbin yet again creating the chance. And it's a fantastic save by the goalkeeper, to be fair. Let's make another quick change or two here. There's a penalty. So Chelsea get a penalty for a shoulder-to-shoulder -shoulder challenge, and we get nothing for this. Look at Caicedo on deal. There's hands to the face there, and he's thrown him to the ground. Absolutely nothing. We will make one more change, though. It's going to be Onana to come off. It's going to be Decore to come on. I'd like to bring Victor Castro on, the 18-year-old Brazilian Youth Academy product. But who do we take off? We can't take off Beto. We can't take off Dobbin. He looks like the most dangerous player on the pitch at this point. The Kuiper with the ball in. Almost finds Beto. There's Justin Deal. Strikes towards goal, but it's blocked. Just lofting the ball back into the box. Might have been the better option there. But the youngster wanted to take the shot on for himself. And with about 10 minutes to go, the game is really well poised at 2-2. Pickford comes out to claim. Justin Deal's in some space. I expected the overarm throw there from Pickford, but instead he rolls it out. And Chilwell punished. Nicely worked out to Patterson there from the short free kick. Tried to slip it in behind for Justin Deal, but Nathan Patterson a bit lackadaisical there on the ball. I feel like we can win this game. I feel like the game is there for the taking. I feel like we've had the better of Chelsea the last 15, 20 minutes or so. Coming away with a point from Stamford Bridge would obviously be a good result. And we can't lose the ball there. Lewis Dobbin just about manages to keep it. Clearance goes straight back to Chelsea, though. Aaron Bamba does well to Shepard. And Kunku out wide, but he's beating his man. Justin Deal back to stop the cross, but he can't, and it's a good save by Jordan Pickford. Thankfully, the shot went to the near post rather than the far. I think if that went back across the goalkeeper, he would have had a real issue there. But it was a, a poor finish, really, in the end. He challenged Maxim de Kuyper, and he's just going to hook clear. I think we'll just defend for these last couple of minutes, I think, especially considering the start that Chelsea had. If we could come away with a point here, then I think we have to be happy. Lou Stobbin trying to craft. One last opportunity though, Caicedo there. Closing him down. Dobbin just about manages to squeeze past him. Eventually relinquishes possession. And Chelsea come away for one final attack of the game. Into four minutes of injury time. Nice little run from De Kuyper. And Bamba up there as well. Decore can't find either of them. Oh, and Bamba almost stole the ball away there. Dobbin in the end does. And knocked down from Beto into Dobbin, who manages to find the space to cross. And it is going to be cleared by Chelsea, who have about 30 seconds to find a winner here. And it doesn't look like they're going to. The referee just allowing them to play on. Eventually does blow his whistle. So it's going to be 2-2. A back and forth game. Bit of an unusual one at Stamford Bridge. An absolutely outrageous penalty decision. Five minutes into the game. Gave Chelsea their head start, but we came back from a one goal deficit twice in the game to take a point from Stamford Bridge and I, I think we have to be happy with that it felt like we had the edge in the second half there and the end of game statistics look pretty much like the half time statistics Chelsea edged possession edged passes attempt edged shots but I think we've put in a, another performance to be proud of there against a really good club so a good performance against another team chasing European football next season. And it does set us up in good stead for the next two games. Slightly easier opposition 
in the next two fixtures. So we could even end the episode unbeaten. Our next opponent, Nottingham Forest, find themselves perilously close to the relegation zone. Just one place and three points above the drop. And Nottingham Forest themselves have a couple of players that we'll be looking closely at in the summer. Morgan Gibbs-White, potentially a player that we could be looking to bring in to play alongside Reese Nelson behind our striker. The same goes for Callum hudson Odoi. whilst Brazilian centre-back Mario has been suggested as a possible addition to the back line. And Ryan Yates could certainly fill that role in defensive midfield alongside Onana and James Garner. And yet none of those players feature today. Perhaps this is the reason why Nottingham Forest are fighting against relegation. Ryan Yates on the bench along with Mario, but no place in the squad at all for Callum hudson Odoi nor Morgan Gibbs-White, who you would have to say are two of Nottingham Forest's better players. As for Graham Potter's 11, Ben Godfrey and James Justin each come into the starting lineup. Abdullah Decore comes into midfield alongside Onana, and Lewis Dobbin, after that fantastic performance, keeps his place in support of Beto up front. And we are still unbeaten in the episode, but how we didn't end up winning this game, I do not know. We finally got a referee decision to go our way as Anthony Alanga was booked within two minutes for this challenge on Maxim de Kuyper. Taiwo Awani was then also booked for this less than stellar challenge on Amadou Onana five minutes later. To be fair, a lot of Nottingham Forest challenges were late because they could get nowhere near the ball. We piled on the pressure early and Beto almost made it count, taking down this James Justin cross just outside the six yard box and firing a shot at the near post, which the Forest goalkeeper was equal to. Lewis Dobbin was lively again, but he couldn't quite make it happen. His shot from just outside the penalty area flashing wide. And we did finally see a player legitimately sent off. Anthony Alanga again going in on Maxim de Kuyper. The challenge late, reckless, his second bookable offence, and he did indeed see red for the challenge. And the 10 men of Forest didn't find it any easier. We continued to pile on the pressure in the first half. Lewis Dobbin... Again, striking from range a little further out this time, but the goalkeeper again equal to it, parrying his shot away for a corner. Beto's header from the resultant corner came close to breaking the deadlock, but it dropped just onto the top of the net rather than hitting the back of it. And we didn't let up in the second half. Reese Nelson playing a nice ball up to Beto, who took it down really well on his thigh with one touch and then fired a shot across the goalkeeper with another. Again, the Nottingham Forest goalkeeper makes a save and we came very close to scoring late in the game. About 10 minutes to go where Maxim de Kuyper whipped in this cross. The young Brazilian Youth Academy product, Victor Castro getting his head to the ball. But yet again, the Forest goalkeeper makes a save. Just not quite clinical enough with the finish. So a dominant performance and one that deserved all three points. But it is a game that sees us take just a point away from Goodison Park. But that does set us up nicely for our third and final game of the episode against Brentford. Brentford having a more than respectable season. They find themselves top half of the table in ninth position. 52 points, which leaves them just four points away from a European place. And they're on a really good run of form as well, having won three out of their last five games and not having lost any it's a really balanced 11 here with Region and Hickey either side of a really strong back three of Collins, Ayer and Ben Mee. Three in midfield as well and then Eddie Nketiah and Brian Umbermo offer a nice balance of talent up front. Victor Castro gets another chance to start up front in that false nine position flanked on either side by Dwight McNeil and Reese Nelson. A very familiar lineup beyond that and Brentford played like a team deserving of a European place in this one they were well organized good in possession and clinical when we gave them opportunities to score we were anything but we were disjointed in defense and lacked creativity in possession and we gifted Brentford the lead 13 minutes into the game some really poor possession play at the back gave the ball to Brian and Burmo who just walked into the box and fired past the completely helpless Jordan Pickford to open the scoring. It was a similar story just before the break. Again, we gifted the ball to Brian and Burmo. Again, he walked into the box. First shot cracked against the post, but four Everton defenders in the area. Brian and Burmo was the man to come up with the ball and he just fired it into an empty net. Whereas we were feeding on scraps really in the first half. This opportunity from Dwight McNeil, the best of our opportunities. Jordan Pickford did his best to keep us in the game, parrying away this shot after both Jared Branthwaite and James Tarkovsky failed to close down Eddie Inketia before he got the shot away. And it was Eddie Inketia who put the game to bed around the hour mark. Too much space in the box. Again, Jared Branthwaite and James Tarkovsky not covering themselves in glory. And Eddie Inketia made no mistake with the finish. So we come away with two points from the episode, which is a disappointing tally when you consider that our first point came with a draw 
away from home against Chelsea. We absolutely dominated Nottingham Forest and should have come away with all three points there and to lose 3-0 at home to Brentford is a really disappointing result. Brentford did look like one of the better sides that we've played this season though and that win does take them to within two points of a European place. We slip a place to 13th in the league on 40 points and that draw that Nottingham Forest picked up at Goodison Park does take them four points away from relegation now. Wolves and Crystal Palace however do have games in hand. It's a tight race at the bottom of the table and there are only three games left to play for most teams in the Premier League. Ours come in the form of a trip to Leicester City. We then host Leeds at Goodison Park and we will round out season one with a trip to the Emirates to take on Arsenal. We'll likely make that our featured game of the episode so we can truly put a ribbon on the season. Make sure you get those suggestions in the comments down below for the transfers that you think we should make in the summer. We need one centre back, we need two centre midfielders, one defensive, one more attacking and we need a winger as well. So we will round out the season in the next episode. I hope to see you there. Take it easy.